Welcome to Pre-Snap Podcast, presented by Line Star App. Here's your host, Casey Bubba and Scott Bogman. And welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Pre-Snap Podcast, brought to you by the wonderful people at Line Star Sports. Make sure you check them out on Twitter at Line Star App and at Line Star NFL. And most importantly, download the app in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Everything you need in the palm of your hand to build your winning DFS lineup. has got a big UFC card this weekend. Big one. Francis Ngannou, heavyweight title. Get the app. Help you build your lineups. Check it all out. But we are here. I um, I led you astray on the recap <laughs> show. We are not going with a new format. We're going with the old format. So this will be your betting show that you're going to obviously be listening to on Thursday. And then on uh, Friday, we'll be coming out with your DFS show for the four-game divisional round action. So we'll get you all broken down there. You can find me on Twitter at BD Entrick and my co-host, as always, on Twitter at Bogman Sports. Scott Bogman, how are we doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. I mean, you know, you look forward to these four games this weekend, and they're all tough calls. So um, this is what we get. The, these are probably the the best eight teams in the NFL at this point. So um, it just fits. All, you know, the last round, we kind of had some blowouts, you know, New England, Pittsburgh, Philly, you know. These are all kind of borderline playoff teams. If you would replace them with the teams that were right behind them, I don't know that there would have been much of a difference. Does Indy go on and beat Kansas City? I doubt it. You know, um, do your Dolphins go in and upset anybody? Maybe, probably not, though. So, you know, we're getting down to the nitty gritty, and these games are going to be very, very competitive, and they all look to be pretty close. So biggest line of the week is six, and... um, it's going to be very, very interesting in this uh, slate here. Yeah, very, very close. Close game. Should be fun. Um, last week, you know, you said most of the favorites won. And the over-unders, if you faded the public on the over-unders, you did very well. That's pretty much the only difference in in the scenario of the week. But like you said, four games this week. Let's not wait around much longer. We have Cincinnati at Tennessee. So obviously Tennessee off a of bye, getting Derrick Henry back in this game. They're minus three and a half point home favorites. Over under 47. Can the Bengals make it two wins in the last 31 years? They absolutely can. And I think when you look and see what they did against the, the Raiders, who are the Raiders are an underrated team. Um, just fired Mike Mayock, by the way. We'll talk about that probably on Sports Grid. But um th- this um this Bengals team is clicking. They're on all cylinders right now. Uh, I would say, you know, all things neutral, you know, play this game out in, on Madden. And Tennessee probably wins, right? Because you have A.J. Brown back healthy, Derek uh, Henry back healthy. You know, he was in practice, taking contact, looked to be fine. So you get all of the big pieces back for Tennessee. So there's going to be no excuses. But the one thing that I would say is, yes, you have all those weapons back, but are they all going to click first go out? You know, I'm not sure. This is a home game for them, which gives them a distinct advantage in this game. You don't have to go to Cincinnati and play in the jungle, which is good for Tennessee. I just can't bet against these Bengals right now. They are uh, very, very efficient, you know, and it's all going to be about can they stop Derrick Henry? And I don't know if they can, but is Derrick Henry 100%? I don't know that either. It, you know, because Derrick Henry at 75% is better than most running backs in the league, but he now becomes a stoppable guy. You know, Derrick Henry at 100%, he's real hard to stop. So uh, we saw them go into Baltimore and, and beat up the, the Ravens a couple years back, remember? Because they just gave the ball to Derrick Henry a bunch of times. They can absolutely do that against Cincinnati. I'm going to have to take the Bengals here because I just don't, I don't know how the Tennessee Titans are going to click even though they're at home I would bet money line on Cincinnati I hate saying this I would bet uh, the money line on Cincinnati in this game I just think they're the better team right now and I got them going to the AFC championship as much as it sickens me so uh, give me the Bengals over these uh, Titans and I will take the under in this game uh, because I do think it plays a little bit closer it's a very interesting game because we've seen it before, in, like in previous years, where there's two teams getting bye weeks. It always felt like at least one of those teams coming off a bye came out really sluggish, and the wild card team just smacked them in the mouth. Yeah. Which um, this we talked about on the previous show that this Bengals offense is built to smack you in the mouth with like the big play, and next thing you know, you're down 14. Like right. it's just 
it's wild. And it's going to be tough to come back from that if they do get down. Exactly. Uh, you know, because you have that grinded out offense with Tennessee. And that's where you have to decide, do you go to a different offense? Because, you can, you know, the, the Bengals' defense is fine, but they're not great. You know, you, you can pass on them. You can definitely run on them. So it, it, there's weapons to be had depending on how you want to run your offense. But like you mentioned, Tennessee's that grinded out offense. And we even said it on the preview show also is it's great having Derrick Henry back, but you got to keep it close because Derrick Henry needs reps to get that ball rolling, to beat them up, to get the big play more often than not. So is he ready for that workload? Is he going to split time with Foreman, who was great? He was really, really good in that role, carrying it 20 plus times a game, just like Henry. But it, it, it's tough, and um, it's it's gonna be a good football game. With all that being said, though, I'm still taking Tennessee. I'm taking I Tennessee hope you're in right. this game. I, I and I love and people. If you guys have listened to this show long enough, you know how much I love Joe Burrow. I love nothing more to see Joe Burrow in an AFC title game, just because that dude just doesn't get phased. Does not get phased by the spot. I didn't even which, think about that. This is your favorite quarterback's bowl. This is Joe yes. Burrow versus Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, and, and the winner could go on to face Aaron Rodgers in the Super Bowl. It'd be just freaking amazing, but it's it's not going to happen, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I'm going to go Tennessee in this game with not a ton of confidence, to be totally honest. It's just one of those if Henry gets going, which wouldn't shock me and they're at home yeah you know, this that's what and that's what makes this a tough game to pick the big the biggest thing for me is if you kind of just take everything kind of whatever it is pretty close Vrabel over taylor is a big difference to me Ooh. big difference to me i don't know I like, Vrabel's eight no anytime he's had more time to prep for a game than his opponent yeah no nah, i i a lot of that is just talent though i i, they have I get what you're personally. saying I, I understand what you're saying. I do think Taylor's a, a pretty solid head coach. He's though, a good coach. So. He's a good offensive coach. But Vrabel, Vrabel definitely has more experience. Uh, Vrabel's he, been here, done that. And the Titans did too. They almost did it last year. So it's like this is not new ground to them. Uh, being the one seed coming off a bye is new. But uh, I'm going to go Tennessee in this one, and I'm going to take the under. Because I under, think they slug Tennessee it out. Tennessee in the under. I think they slug it out, and it's a very, very good playoff football game. We both have the under, so we got, we got that, that going, going for us. us. Um, the Saturday night game, um, I would say game of the week, but I think the AFC Sunday night game might be the game of the week. So these are two great games to, to end both days. They're all good. But San Francisco at Green Bay, Green Bay minus six off the bye week. Roger said he feels the best he's felt in a long time with his, you know, his toe. Over under 47. I am scared of this game, even though I have confidence in them winning. I, I'm scared of green, this game. I'm not really scared of this game. I'm going to take Green Bay fairly easily. Uh, here's what we have in terms of weather. You know, in Tennessee, it's going to be 36 degrees and clear. So mm -hmm. Cincinnati, Tennessee, they're both used to that cold weather. It's going to be 12 degrees in Green Bay. Uh, so it's going to it's not quite Chance as bad as that snow. Buffalo game. Chance of snow. Chance of snow. It's not going to be quite as bad as that Buffalo game, but it's going to be nice and cold. You know, that Green Bay. This is why you want home field advantage because you've played in this before. And, and, you know, look, they're football players, right? San Francisco is not going to come out here and fold up because of the weather, but it does. It just makes things a little more difficult. Um, we saw last week that, you know, the Niners, th they survived the Jimmy G big time mistake that he made. You're not going to survive Aaron Rodgers and the big time mistake. This is another tough road game and a, um, a tough environment. And look, we saw San Francisco get up and let Dallas come back last week as well. And I think all of that stuff kind of has to factor into what we're uh, picking in this game. So for me, I'm going to take Green Bay. I'm also going to take the over. I think we get some points in the second half, um, you know, specifically from the Packers. And if there are multiple Jimmy G big time mistakes, the Packers are going to make some easy scores out of them. So I'm going to go with Green Bay and take the over in this game. I'm going to take Green Bay as well, even though I'm nervous about it. I, I do believe that Jimmy G is going to make at least two mistakes. Like I really yeah. do this. The hand he's hurt too. It's not just making fun of Jimmy G. His shoulders messed up. He's got yeah. ligament damage in his he's hand. Up. Yeah. It's gonna be cold. Like it doesn't take much to screw it up now. So I'm going Green Bay in this game. But the, if any team at, that's left could make this interesting, it's the Niners because you don't know what you're gonna get. Debo running the ball, passing the ball, you don't know. Like they, there's lots of ways that Shanahan can dial it up. But give me Green Bay. But I'm gonna take the under. I think there's gonna be some feeling out in this game. Uh, we've seen Green Bay in some of these big games already this season where it's a slow go early on. They're afraid to open it up, and then when they do open it up, it's over. But they kind of peter through it and try to get everybody warmed up. So I'm going Green Bay. I'm going to go the under as well. So two boring unders for me on Saturday. Sunday, 
Rams at Tampa Bay. This is a fun one. Tampa Bay minus three over under 48 and a half. Does Brady get back to the NFC title game? I mean, you know, uh, it's it's interesting because Jensen and Wirfs both didn't practice today as uh, we're heading towards this game. We're recording this on a Wednesday afternoon here. Um, I, I So this game is extra hard to pick. I will say this. I'm not picking against Tom Brady at any point. So uh, we saw the Rams get in the playoffs. They backed in. So did the Cardinals and they beat the Cardinals who um, had been backed in. You know, this is a road game for Matt Stafford. The weather, you know, it's Tampa Bay. So that's not going to affect anything. It's going to be 61 degrees and clear. Beautiful day in Tampa Bay. So um, it's going to be absolutely great in terms of that. So this game isn't going to get messy for any of those reasons, but um, I just don't like the way the Stafford has been playing, even in the game that the, you know, the last week in the wild card round when they beat Arizona on Monday night, he didn't have to throw a bunch of passes. I don't think that's going to be the case in this game. I think he is go. going to have to throw some passes. And if those mistakes start to creep up again, I'm just not going to bet against the Bucks with Tom Brady at the helm. So they've been going through a lot of injuries. This is easily not the best Bucks team that we've seen all year. They are not peaking right now. And if they're playing the Niners or um, Green Bay in the NFC Championship, I may think different. But against the Rams, I just can't do it. So I'm going to take Tampa Bay in this game. I'm also going to take the under uh, just because I don't know what's going to go on with this offensive line. Are we going to get worse back? Are we going to get Jensen back? Are we going to get one of them back? None of them back. Leonard Fournette did practice today. So he, you know, uh, Lombardi Lenny back in the That's fold big. here That's big. for the bucks. That is huge for them. So uh, give me the bucks and give me the under in this game. Yeah, I'm taking Tampa Bay as well. I'm taking um, Brady. I am nervous about the offensive line. There's no sugarcoating that you, you hit on all the, the key parts there, but the things that work, especially with playoff Lenny potentially back, if they do get a pass rush going, it takes about two screen passes and they slow that pass rush down real quick. Yeah. So that that's something that Brady and, and Brady's been through this before. It's not going to be like startling to him like it was to Kyler Murray last right. week. Um, the Rams also played probably one of the most complete games they've played in a long time. Now you're asking to do it twice in a row, not going on the road against Tom Brady. It's asking a lot. And you nailed the biggest reason for me is as good as the Rams played, they dominated because they ran the ball and limited Matthew Stafford's usage. That's why he was effective. Right. Running against the, the Bucks is a whole different animal. Very we just saw them take do. down the number one rushing team yep. in the NFL. Yeah, very, very difficult. So it's going to be on Matt Stafford's shoulders. And we've seen how that's worked the last five to six weeks. So yeah. I'm going to take my chances with this Bucks defense winning this game more so than the Bucks offense winning this game. I'll take Tampa Bay in the under with you on this one. I think Tampa Bay gets it done pretty easily. I'd be shocked. Like, the Rams might have trouble scoring more than 14 points in this game. I, I think Tampa Bay kind of leaves the wood to them, but we'll see. Ending off the weekend, Buffalo at Kansas City. Kansas City minus one and a half, over under 54 and a half. This is definitely get your popcorn ready. Enjoy your Sunday evening. I am so ready for this game. This is going to be a great one. Um, I tell you what, though, um, you saw the shift last week in – Patrick Mahomes and this Chiefs offense. I uh, and I that is really what I can't get over. Now Buffalo was amazing, right? The eight straight possessions, you know, or seven straight possessions of all touchdowns for them against um New England. They just looked uh, unstoppable last week. They looked very very good. So, um they look great too, but Kansas City there's just something different about Mahomes when he gets on one of these heaters, you know, um and he definitely did against Pittsburgh last week. And the things that they were doing, I mean, I even heard my Steelers podcast there saying, why would you even put that on film? You didn't need to do some of that stuff against uh, Pittsburgh to beat them. So maybe save that stuff for the next round. But I think they would just wanted to try some things just to see if they're going to click and work. So um, I think for me, you got to go with the home squad here. Kansas City at home is going to be a tough place for any team to go on the road. Um, you know, Josh Allen, uh, won a big playoff game last week. Uh, he, he can add on to his legacy in Buffalo by going on the road and beating Kansas city. I just don't think it's going to happen though. Kansas city's defense stepped up and played really great. Um, you know, until like the end of the fourth quarter, uh, for them as well, when they were, you know, mainly rolling back out backups out there anyway. So for me, I'm going to stick with the chiefs and go with a chiefs Bengals, um, AFC championship, uh, uh, you know, this time it would be in Kansas city, 
But, um, you know, you can't count out the Bills. They've been doing great things here, but I just can't pick against Patrick Mahomes after I saw what he did. After that second quarter, that second quarter, they they just turned it all the way on and the floodgates opened and everything was clicking for Casey's offense. So give me the Chiefs and I'll go with the over. I think you're not going to be able to stop Josh Allen. So this game could come down to who makes the big mistakes. Now, Mahomes does have some tur turnover worthy mm -hmm. passes. And he had some, you know, we saw TJ Watt put his hand on pretty much everything. But once he started rolling and, and, you know, creating his own lanes and stuff like that, that stuff is just impossible to stop. So give me Kansas City. Give me the over. Yeah, this is going to be a fun one. The Bills should have no trouble moving the ball in Kansas City. Their defense is better than I think the stats rank out because a lot of the production has been in garbage time against that defense when it really hasn't mattered. But still, a defense that Josh Allen and company is going to move the football on. There's no sugarcoating that. It's just a matter of how can you, how well can you do it, how fast can you do it, because they were just doing it ridiculously easy against New England. That won't happen against Kansas City, most likely, especially in Kansas City. I just don't see that one playing out that way. Flip side, the Bills' defense is legit. Is very, very good. Number one so, rush defense in the NFL, Buffalo. So I'm curious to see how – Mahomes and them attack and I'm not worried about it when you have like 17 weapons like even Byron Pringle has been a monster you have ways to to make it work I'm gonna take Kansas City in this game part of me wants Buffalo to win I really do but I'm really I think, surprised that the spread went down to one and a half yeah um, I guess this, this is impressive um, yeah that, it, that, a lot of respect so much money came in on the Buffalo side and that's why that's why it ticked down a little bit because I thought Kansas City minus three is pretty much standard but so many taken so many people take a buffalo after watching them dominate uh New England last week. So this is I mean, this is why the playoffs are exciting. You put best on best uh up against each other. This yeah, this, this could be the Super Bowl, right? So this is an AFC title game game. Yeah. Like, this is this is what it is. And no disrespect, Tennessee can beat either one of these teams. I don't doubt it. They already have. But um, this is the AFC title game, it feels like. So give me uh give me the Chiefs. Give me man. Everybody and their moms on that over. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with the under. I'm gonna take four unders, four home teams, and four unders this weekend. Wow! Give me Kansas okay. City and the under. We're gonna we're gonna see how this one plays out, but it should be a fun, fun week. So, uh, any final thoughts for divisional round weekend? No, I mean just enjoy it, man. It's gonna be fun, and these are some you know epic matchups here with some of the biggest stars in the NFL. I mean, Debo is becoming one of the bigger stars in the NFL. Um, you know, uh, Aaron Rodgers, of course, is this his last run in Green Bay? And is this his last game in Green Bay? If that's it, if the Niners uh, can somehow pull this off, that could be it for them. And, um, you know, I mean, obviously Tom Brady doing it again. No one's surprised to see him in the final eight. He seems to be in the final two every single year. What was the stat you threw out that he had more NFC victories in the playoffs? The same amount, same amount as Aaron Rodgers. It's, it's just absurd. Yeah. One year in the NFC. Oh, good lord! Combined with the Super Bowl wins, he has as many playoff wins versus NFC teams as Aaron. Oh Rodgers. God, that is just that is a dumb stat. That those are those are Jerry Rice numbers, Wayne Gretzky numbers. You yep. know, just things that will never be broken. So, um, incredible run for Tom Brady here, and uh, you know, maybe the two best quarterbacks in the NFL and Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes matching up on Sunday night to end it. It's going to be a fun, fun weekend, my friend. Yeah, I can't wait. As of now, I have no plans, but that is obviously capable of changing with a 18-month-old running around. <laughs> so I'll be watching it one way or another, either via phone or via the television, but I'll be glued to something because it's going to be awesome. So heavily, heavily looking forward to it, and um, hope you guys are ready for it as well. And what you also need to be ready for is some DFS action, which we're going to have dropping for you on Friday to preview the entire four-game slate where FanDuel and DraftKings both have a uh, some nice nice price pools for the four game action. So make sure you download the app, Apple App Store, Google Play Store. Give us a rate review on iTunes or go check us out on the Lion Star YouTube channel. But for now, Bogman's on Twitter at Bogman Sports. I'm at BD Intric, and we'll catch you guys next time. See ya. Thanks for listening to Pre Snap Podcast presented by Line Star App. Please like, comment, subscribe, and rate for good karma in your.